So here's what I'm trying to figure out. Beast of Bear's Head, which will need to be trimmed down for a, a bit of it anyway, because it shouldn't have really, really long fur like this, or like this. But I like to have the length to start with so I can have long, shaggy areas. But some of the debate is I have this, that's the same fur that I used for the Devil Monkey that you probably just watched me do at some point. And it's great stuff. It's it's so varied in its minute little details, everything from a kind of a golden kind of color to a dark brown to all sorts of beautiful, beautiful variation to it. It's a good kind of medium to kind of medium dark brown. Good stuff. And I've got quite a bit of this. But this is all I have of this one. It's quite a bit. Very much likely to be plenty to do the head. But whew, it, it stinks. <laughs> That's the thing that stinks. It's not the other furs. It's just because it's been close to this one. Um, this one's been around for a few years with me. Like three, four years maybe. Something like that. Um, and it, it managed to, man to be in a storage unit <laughs> with something that stank pretty bad apparently. As I say storage unit, but I mean a room. Um, now I'm trying to figure out what the heck it snuck up and stank the thing up. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can to clean that up no matter what. Uh, admittedly, it is kind of entertaining to think of the idea of the, the monster actually stinking, uh, <laughs> kind of like a monster probably would, uh, not something I would do, very likely do for an art gallery unless that's like part of the whole idea. Uh, and it's not something that would permanently make this place stink. Uh, but I have used smell in uh, artwork before, of course. Uh, but it was more of a burnt leaves kind of thing to give an environmental smell to a, a uh, an installation that I did. Um, totally different thing here. But the question is, will this be a better thing to start with for head color? Or should I just go straight to the brown, the darker brown that is, instead of the tan kind of brown? I think I may be leaning towards the darker one because El Monstro here is supposed to be a terrifying, scary thing and more of a toe-headed kind of thing. It's not not going to be as, as intimidating, I don't think. Um, and I've already given him slightly goofy kind of old animal crooked teeth and a lot more human and softer kind of expression to the face. So I can't really afford to let it be too much pushing towards the uh, uh, you know, comical, cutesy, cuddly, or, or lacking of seriousness. So I think I just talked myself into using that one. So let's move that one out of the way. Toss it over there again. Thought you might enjoy this one too. Look at this little short pile, but textured or uh, crinkly a little bit. So it, it just, it doesn't even want to part to let you even see, excuse me, to let you see the substrate. It's, it's great. That's going to be really fun. Sadly, this is the only thing I have of it. I took advantage of, uh, this is from National Fiber Technologies. Uh, they have a... Uh, 
a website associated with them that's uh, basically their remnants and uh, trimmings, that kind of thing that they sell there. Um, like once a year or something like that, they have a, a big sale where it's like, buy a square foot, get another square foot for free. So I took advantage just and got both of these and some more of this stuff uh, this year so that I could have a, a variety. And especially since I'm going to have a big cow head to take care of, I figured I wanted a, a little bit of variety to give it more of a buffalo kind of thing. So anyway, I got this because that'll be a really nice buffalo kind of thing to put in some patches on it weird hide on so anyway i thought i'd show you that real quick because look forward to that at some point it's going to be some fun stuff so let's put this over here and hold it still we'll be over here all right so Instead of having it you know, facing forward like the devil monkey head so I could get more of a volume out of it by combing backward like that, I think I want it to be a little more sleek instead of, you know, like, was that Tina Turner from the 80s or something here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really going for the 80s rocker thing. So what I think I'm going to do is flip it the other way where the movement of the fur would normally go on a head. It's rolled under because of the stretchiness. But it won't be quite as up in the front like that. That's going to be a trick to get out of there. That's way down in there. There we go. So, anyway... I think I'm going to do it this kind of way so it'll be a little bit more sleek and flowing with the body instead of fluffing out like the devil monkey did. So it looks super weird right now and it's a totally hairpiece thing going on. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to figure out a way to patch it in and then do um, some stretch details and then do some flocking in all these other areas with the brown like that. So it will be relatively, oh, I'm going to sneeze again, relatively close. Yep, here it comes. Hey, what's up? Excuse me. Whew, pardon me. So anyway... Now that I've reset my my in my mind's computer, I can't think anymore. I sneezed it right away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's totally a really bad hairpiece thing going on there. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's that's funny. Anyway, so yeah. Right over so I can. There we go. But maybe if I put it back, I said put it back there. <laughs> Hair in the face. Might be a little bit easier to take it seriously. And I can stretch it around and show a little bit better what it'll look like. So what I'll probably do is actually take this and start from matching just a little overlap on the back here so that I can start stretching it around and pulling forward a bit um, so I can kind of work towards the front. And I'll take another piece and start putting it in here. Then I'll probably have to use a, a, a couple of small separate pieces to do the ears. They'll be fluffier kind of bare ears. Uh, but I'll probably need to work around them just to get um, the fur to, to work with the head the way I need it to. 
So, so much of this talking is not getting anywhere, so let's get somewhere, right? Yeah. Now I think, let's see if I can grab both ends of this so when I flip it over, it won't fall off. There we go. All right. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> I want to flip it this way. So that I can start working on it from here. So this is a complicator with this piece because I've had to, I've used this on another thing already a little bit. So I've got a little bit of a pattern on the part, part that really needs to be straight. So I probably need to get another one of my pieces to start on the back after all. So let me go grab that. All right, so here is a bit more. All right, here's a big piece. That may be a little bit more than I need. Like I said, I got a bunch of this. Couldn't help it. I had to with all the half price fur. It was it was way too good of an opportunity to pass up. The unfortunate part is that they're just whatever size and shape that they come in. So you get what you get kind of thing. But they're really good about it. Um, in fact, they usually give you just a little extra from what they actually say it is. Uh, because if it's some uneven kinds of, of edges, like the little cut down here, they usually try to just kind of get it relatively close to this is how big it is and whatever extra there is, that's how it is. Uh, so that's really nice of them. So anyway, I'm babbling instead of doing. So let's do the thing. That's a pretty big piece too. So looks kind of like it will be just as good of an idea to start with this one and then patch in the head with probably this one. So I'll pick this guy up. It's going to be super dusty now. Huh, not that bad. I actually cleaned the table a little bit better than I thought I did in between shooting here. Okay, so let's make sure we get it so that it's moving the fur the right direction. And I'm not sure. Yep, yeah, that is. Whew, I won't even have to stretch that like at all to get around the beefy part. How about that? Usually... I, I would have totally expected to have to do a bit of stretching to get it, but no, this is going to be allowing him to be really furry with no big problem. So that's good. That's a pretty big circumference too, so. So just like before, what I'm going to try for is giving a seam kind of down the chin and middle of the neck here um, so that the fur will kind of kind of come back, but if it's going to flow at all, hopefully back and kind of down towards this seam, allowing it to to uh, blend that edge a little easier. But that's the, that's the general idea anyway, so we'll, we'll try for that. Let's uh, get some pins. That might be helpful. What is this? Scandroid? Scandroid, I think, that I'm listening to here? I don't remember for sure. It's a remake of an 80s song. 
And of course, now somebody wants to get a hold of me. Okay, so I do have a little extra to pull down our bridge, so that's good. And I'll kind of not really pull, but make it somewhat taut as I go, so it kind of forms around the around the curve. Let me make sure this isn't a student that needs something really important. <laughs> nope, it's a colleague that is hilarious. <laughs> so this is going to be probably a long time <laughs> before I actually post these. Uh, but the art department I'm working for right now uh, just got a five, I want to say $500,000 grant, I think, or something, or I don't know. We just got a, a pretty good sized grant from a former student, um, which was really sweet of them. Really awesome in helping us get the art studio supplied, and it's really cool. <laughs> but of course, my my philosophy friend, one of them anyway, I I really dig the philosophy folks here, apparently. Um, but yeah, he, <laughs> he was like, yeah, so what did you do to get the money? I was like, I don't know. I, <laughs> like, I have no idea how that, came, that happened and why they decided that was a good idea, but I'm super glad they did. Uh like, I, we haven't even started talking about what the heck we, we should do with the money now to help get the studio working. So his, his only response was, Kegger? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think that's the way to go. No, actually, now that I think about it, I think it's, it was a 5,000, not 500,000. I'm thinking of a different grant that's not coming to us. <laughs> Any money that comes to the, the art section is always a surprise because <laughs> we just don't get money. Uh, but it's also really all the more awesome when it comes from a, a former student. So it's really great to see students that took humanities especially in a you know that we don't have where i work right now we don't have any art majors uh we just have art minors but we very frequently have students that start taking art classes partially as a a way to get away from the uh i don't remember which side of the which hemisphere of the brain is which but switch gears if you will from the uh, the type of analytical studies and get into more of a creative and visual communication kind of thing. So we get a bunch of the, those students who are really just trying to do it as a, uh, a change in pace. But very frequently they find that uh, they're, they're actually developing a lot of skills that employers desperately need them to have, especially when you're talking about uh, very science-minded uh, individuals that are notoriously have a hard time communicating with anyone else. And especially when you're communicating with people that aren't in the same field as, as your expertise, it can be very, very difficult. And, and so they come to the art department sometimes and realize, oh my gosh, <laughs> Only because I had these classes am I either... A, sometimes they don't realize that they were learning as much until afterwards. Uh, but they very frequently find that uh, employers hire them because they were an art major. And they know these are students that are going to be able to carry on conversations and be able to discuss things with... Uh, you know, with their, uh, yeah, anybody, I'm trying to figure out phrase it, different types of phrasings for different fields, but basically, uh, for the people that they have to associate with different departments within the company or whatever it might happen to be customers or whatever. 
government. Uh, no, no, that's not going to work there. <laughs> I can only put this into the foam. So all the places that I've had to re-sculpt with body putty won't work. <laughs> I'm going to have to make do and see what I can do for some of that, but... Fake it as best as possible. There we go. Managed to get through some of it. So some of my problem, of course, is I've got an ear pulling right here, making the diameter bigger. And same on the other side, of course. Um, so I need to trim, maybe just figure out where it is and make a little slot for it. That way it'll flow around it better. <clears throat> but the more I look at this, the more I'm starting to think this might actually do the entire head instead of patching it like I was thinking I would have to do. So that's pretty exciting. It's really great to not have to use more fur than I absolutely need to. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm dying of thirst. <laughs> I have that coffee drink that I am uh, burned myself out on that last night. And I'm not a coffee drinker anyway. It's kind of weird that I decided to buy that to begin with. Uh, it was just so convenient to have a powdered drink. So, as opposed to, you know, going to a grocery store or something to buy some sodas and whatever. Of course, I, I ordered some things on Amazon. <laughs> I buy like everything possible on Amazon it seems. So anybody that's already aware of that was probably already laughing at me like are you uh of course he did kind of thing. So I'm kind of desperately waiting for my diet coke to arrive today. <laughs> it's so dumb, isn't it? I know. I could just go out anytime I want and grab a soda. But no, no. I want to want to stay here. Now this is going to fluff out more at the bottom because of the way this is, you know, going this way and kind of pulling this way with the head. Uh, so it's going to fluff out more at the bottom. So towards the chin, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm probably going to trim it a little short of that anyway. Uh, but towards on the neck, towards the chin, it's going to start really fluffing quite a bit like that, so I'm probably going to end up using the clippers like I did on the monkey head and uh, trim this up in here. Uh, but towards the, the middle of the neck here, I'm probably going to let it go as big as possible because it'll make it look much more dramatically big bear kind of thing because they look much bigger than their actual body is. So that's, that's really, really going to be beneficial. And another reason why you can tell, I, why, why would I bother to smooth everything out? Because it's just impossible to see all the work I would have been doing to it anyway. As is, I'd, I'd probably put way too much time and effort into it, but... By now you're probably getting used to me doing that. I wish I could say the same. Okay, so... The trick will be trying to figure out a way to slice that in just the right spot. I need to kind of pull it a little bit because as it comes it's not going to be... Uh, I don't want it to pull this way or that kind of thing. So it's going to be a little tricky to get it to fit in there. But thankfully this stuff is so forgiving I, I'm not feeling too worried about just going for it. This four-way stretch stuff is a freaking dream to work with. Like, I used to make puppets, like I mentioned a couple times before. And with those, I, uh, I used this stuff whenever, sparingly, but whenever possible, more or less. Um, but I also used the, you know, your fabric faux fur that you get from the fa fabric stores. And boy, that stuff sucks to have to deal with. It's a heck of a lot more <clears throat> pattern intensive and in that kind of thing is necessary. Whereas with this, you're like, okay, this is a little small, but that's okay. I'm going to stretch it to make it work the way I need it to. Let's just do this thing. 
it's yeah it's it's much much nicer to deal with <laughs> and no i'm not sponsored by national fiber technology they just have really awesome stuff too <laughs> whenever i start doing mold making stuff if i happen to have posted that and already and you've seen that <laughs> you'll see me gush about smooth on frequently because they have some fantastic products and they're super nice people so <laughs> you're probably already used to me going i'm not actually sponsored by so and so <laughs> don't think this is me getting paid to say these things because <laughs> nobody pays me anything not yet not as of the time of me recording these does anybody pay me for my artwork <clears throat> for my teaching thankfully i get a little bit of money but i'm an art teacher at a university it's not like a i get the big bucks what little i get goes right into these things and some you know video gaming and stuff like that <laughs> Um, this is a, shortly before the release of uh, Cyberpunk video game, so I'm, that's one thing I'm looking forward to right now, because I am a, a very, you could probably already know by now, I'm very much an 80s kind of person, and <clears throat> Cyberpunk stuff comes from the 80s predominantly, uh, and it is a very 80s aesthetic uh, something I'm kind of disappointed that the video game didn't push any more than it did. It's trying to go just straight up futuristic, which now nah, it should be retro futuristic, but that's just me. Uh, anyway, but yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to right now. However, I've been doing this so intensively in classwork. I haven't been spending any time on anything. I spent few hours on the Borderlands Halloween event the other day but that was it but that's because it's a Halloween event really more than anything and Borderlands because I love Borderlands Flack Flack's my current main I was a gauge person in Borderlands 2 though because I love gauge <laughs> so much awesome All right, so you can't tell what I'm doing under there, but I'm actually fitting the slice that I just made in around or around the ear and pulling it towards the body. Uh, so hopefully in just a second, you're going to see that a little bit better. But I'm doing that on this side here as well. And with, with so much fur, you can't really see what I'm doing anyway. But you'll have a better idea in a minute. I think... I may have a little extra fur on the top, so I may extend the slice a little bit so I can pull this way and kind of flatten that. But we'll see how, what it looks like. It might actually be good to have a wrinkle of fur up there, just to give a little bit more fur. Kind of at the back of the skull, roughly, is where that my hand is right now. Hmm. <coughs> good golly, I do not like allergies. Okay, so let's flip this over. And you can see some ears poking through the big fur head. All right. <laughs> yeah, can hardly even see the ears through all this. Look at all that. <laughs> so much fur. So... Uh, I'll probably end up kind of pulling this in, gluing it down in that kind of dip that goes in for the ear canal in there, just to glue it down at the edge. Um, and then I may end up having to uh, trim a bit of this just so you can see the ears better and it doesn't look so, you know, it doesn't pile up in front of the ear like this. Uh, something you don't have with most animals. Because uh, it blocks the sound. You don't, you don't want too much blocking there. Um, in fact, my cat has not only thin 
very thin fur like most cats do on their on his ear uh, but in front of it in this kind of trough kind of area right in front of his ears is like very thin fur you can see the scalp uh, on his head there pretty easily um, and it, it's kind of that same sort of sound channel kind of thing I think so it's interesting not a not every cat has that kind of thing though Mine does. And it's not because he's a balding old man. He's always had that. And he's not an old man either. He's only about 10, 11, something like that. I'm not a much of a fur, fur daddy or whatever you'd call it. I love my cat and everything, but I don't, I'm not a... He's not my, my baby. So I, I don't really think of his birthday all that much. I love him more than I think he loves me sometimes, but because he is a little bit of a jerk. <laughs> he's, he's a lot better than he used to be, though. All right, me babbling as I try to get this initial fitting on here, but this is great. This is plenty of fur to do what I need in one shot. That is going to be awesome. Because it's always frustrating and kind of problematic to match any kind of patches or anything like that. Because they, they very frequently seem to look artificial and you can tell the eight, the edges. good thing about this really long pile of fur like this is that you can comb them together and you can almost never see any difference if you don't want to. Especially on something that's not going to be moving and flexing. You don't have to worry as badly. Uh, but if it is like a a fursuit for a cinema or something like that. You'll need to get the edges really carefully stitched to the edges of the other ones just so it gets blended together really good, really good, really well, and uh, it'll fit a lot nicer. It'll look really good. This stuff is just so good. It's so wonderful. I haven't done a fursuit for anybody yet. Uh, I've I've helped students who were the socially acceptable furry style <laughs> not the not the furry furry type uh but they they do the fursuits for cosplay and stuff like that um but i've had had a few students that needed help with that kind of thing usually they have to go with the cheaper furs of course because they're students you can't afford several hundred dollars worth of fur just for like a half suit or something so uh, unfortunately, that's much more challenging for them. But this stuff, though, mm, it's mwah. <laughs> okay. So enough of that. At this point, I'm I'm just kind of poking around at stuff, and what I really need to do is just start matching it up and fitting the back end, and I'll start migrating it up towards the front, and I'll. Uh, yeah. No. I'm, I'm re- I'm questioning myself here. I think I may start from the ears, since they're fitting fairly well right now. I may come and pull this up from both sides, as well as the inside of the ear here, and glue them down so that they get based in really nicely, and then work both directions, kind of all four directions really, away from them. Um, because I can always pull, stretch a little bit to get back there. Shouldn't really need to since I've got it all laid out like this. Um, but if necessary, I can do a little bit if it somehow shrinks around the, the kind of, I don't really have any kind of undulations this way on this, but sometimes that's an issue. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of babbling because I'm Debating on whether or not I'm ready for to just go and jump in doing that right now. So, what I'm probably going to do, since this video is probably getting relatively long. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I haven't really accomplished much. Huh, sorry about that. That's how art is sometimes, though. Uh, but I'm going to cut it off for now and probably go have a coffee drink, since I don't have my Diet Coke or anything. <sighs> Less sigh. <laughs> uh, rehydrate so I feel a little more 
ready to do this. And then I'll come back and start jumping in on it. So, I'll see you in just a little bit, probably.